How's it going guys? ArcherBlexC here with a, another one of our deck profiles for our little friendly tournament we did. Uh, this is one that we did kind of just throw together because we wanted to see another um, uh, single color deck. Uh, we chose Pyrus because um, it's pretty cool. We wanted to see Diamond Dragonoid in action. Uh, and again, for those of you that don't really know, you do have the Diamond Dragonoid like figurine, the toy or whatever. <coughs> but you do play the regular Pyrus Dragonoid to do that. All right. Diamond Dragonoid is actually an upgrade card, which you'll see as we move through this deck. Um, but what we have here is our Pyrus Trox. He's awesome. Uh, Diamond Dragonoid. Uh, there's a video on that. Go check that out on the channel. He's really awesome looking. Uh, his horn didn't come out there. And then Ultra Hydrus Pyrus. So um, we're going to look through this. This is my friend here. There will be Frost, and uh, he was the pilot of this deck. Uh, we just kind of threw it together. Um, so the idea for this deck was uh, attack, attack, attack. So adding attack stat. Um, so a lot of the cards you'll see will boost that. Um, Pyrus cards have the, uh, what's the ability called? Uh, where they get the Fury. Uh, Fury says that if you have no cards in your hand, you get an extra effect. Normally it's like more attack or something like that. So we wanted to play around <coughs> with that. Uh, so... Frost is going to go through his characters here and his cores, and then we'll move on through the deck. All right, uh, so just in order, first I played Trox. Um, he has 500 V-Power and one attack to start off. If you win the roll, he actually gets a, an ability called Victor, which just adds one floating energy. And his cores were a red shield and a helix. For the shield, it is Pyrus and Darkest. Chaos. Uh, Darkest. For um, 400 B power, and the helix is minus 200 B and plus 5 attack, so that's a little bit of a trade off. Um, next, I had Dragonoid, which is B 200 and 5 attack, no abilities, and he has a red fist and a green fist. The red that I ran was plus 100 B and plus 4 attack. It's 150. And, and uh, green fist from 150 B and plus 1 attack. And then last. I had Hydra's Ultra with 300B and 5 attack with another shield and helix. With This one is a 300B and minus 100B and plus 4 attack. Yeah, so who would be your, uh, your usual first attacker? Because a lot of people are starting to find that you want to start with like a certain guy and then end with a guy so that your team attack is a little more effective because some of them have lower stuff. So who would be your first attacker usually? Typically I went with Hydrus, then Trox, then Dragonoid. Hydrus just seems to be the easiest to open and because he is ultra, he also has the best chance of just throwing him off and getting me to a nice little start. Yeah, so those Ultra Bakugan do have that spring load to them. So uh, we kind of go over this in the openings, but they, they spring open and they have a lot of action and they normally flip around and knock people off. So uh, that is a good strategy to use. Um, if you have some Ultra Bakugan to use. All right, so uh, let's go into some of the upgrades for your characters. Um, uh, we had a couple here. So uh, first I ran two Hypertroxes, which are two energies to evolve, and it ups him to 600 B power, two attack, and instead of the one free energy when you win a roll, it is now plus two. Yeah, so that's really nice for your uh, paying two to upgrade him that turn. You, you pay two to upgrade them, but then if you win, you kind of get your two energy back to mess around with during the fighting phase. So it's a really good upgrade there. Also, next for Dragonoid, I had Diamond Dragonoid, who is really fantastic uh, when you can get him out. It's yeah. a six energy cost, and it is a uh, it ups his B power to 900, his attack to 9, and if you land him on a Fire Fist, you get an extra 500 B power, and plus five attack for when you use him. Yeah, he's pretty good once you actually get him out. It, it's a high cost, but at, at the end of the game, when you actually get him out, he starts he starts dominating pretty hard once you get him out there. And then um, lastly for Hydrus, I ran two Hyper Hydrus Ultras, which ups him to 600 B power and six attack, and then Titan Hydrus Ultra, which typically was very difficult to get out but it ups him to 700 B power, 7 attack, and if you win the roll, he actually gains an ability that lets you destroy an enemy energy card. Yeah, pretty cool. So we have more of these two-cost upgraded characters, which are pretty nice to have. You know, turn two, 
uh, if you want to spare the energy to use them, uh, you can normally get some decent attack power off of this. And again, this deck is really a uh, hyper attack power. Uh, so having this nice six there, which is a little above average, is pretty good for this kind of deck. So let's get into some of the ability cards, get the characters out the way. All right, so first we'll go over my one cost cards. And I ran three fireballs, which is just a uh, one cost plus three attack. Typically, I wouldn't really use these. I uh, would usually just put them in for energy. Next, I have one Inferno, which gives you, for also one cost, plus two attack for each Pyrus on your team. Being that I run three Pyrus, I would get six attack, which is really nice considering the high attack values for all of the other Bakugan, just base. Yeah, that's just a one of because I do believe we have one copy of that card. Ideally for this deck, obviously you'd probably want to run that as a three of. Uh, but we are working with what we have here, guys. Next I have my last one cost card, which would be Sifting Ashes. Um, you can draw two cards, then discard two cards. Um, for this deck, I don't really feel the need to draw. So this was, whenever I saw this in my hand, I was typically pleased because it was just free energy for me to use but possibly playing other decks where it would be more beneficial that would be a more used card um, on to the two energy cards i have two pyrus strikes which adds plus three attack once again since i have uh, a nice pyrus deck it's plus six for pyrus yeah pretty cool when you're running mono pyrus there and then I had one Cycling Warmth, which honestly, I never used more than maybe once. Um, it's plus two attack, then you return it to the bottom of your deck, so that's nice, gives you a little extra life yeah, after it, you get a boost. Yeah, it's cool, you get your attack boost, which works for the deck, and then it does go back into your deck, uh, so you don't actually discard it to lose a life, you actually gain it back after you draw it and lose the life at that time. So, it, it's a nice little card. Uh, again, only have one of those. As of now. Pyrus is probably the the uh, faction we're, we're lacking the most in and playset wise, but we tried to make it work. We did we did okay. Um, next up I had Cindius Stand for two energy. Um, it's an action card. Shuffle any number of cards from your hand into your deck, plus one attack for each card shuffled. I probably could have utilized this card a little better, but typically whenever I had a hand, it was relatively stacked towards cards that I didn't want to necessarily place as energy, so once again, I would place Cindius Stand for energy. Um, this is another two cost fire boost. Uh, just a nice little plus 400 B power. No extra effects. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good staple card for Pyrus, I believe. Just a, a good two cost uh, plus 400 B power, which is pretty beefy in a lot of fighting situations. So um, I, I would say that could be a three of maybe when uh, the next time around this comes. Especially for Dragonoid because he does start out with um, 200 B power but five attacks. So it's very beneficial to get him out. However, there's not many Bakugan that have 200 B power. So you really need to buff him up. So next I had Drago's Fury which is plus four attack. And then Fury which is no cards in hand. You get double hit. So... Whichever Bakugan you're attacking with, you would just double their attack. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty dangerous there. Um, th this is one of those hyper attack cards that we were kind of trying to base the deck around with. Uh, there's a couple other ones in here. I mean, you've seen some of them, uh, but that was kind of one of the ideas for the deck to keep this rolling. Next up, I had Might of Cindius, which is actually one of my favorite cards, uh, action-wise. For two cost, you get plus one attack, and it flips the script a little bit. And on the turn that you use it, the victor is decided by highest attack instead of B-Power. Once again, besides Trox, uh, Dragonoid, and Hydrus can really benefit from this card because they do have high attack based on uh, other Bakugan. And I would typically throw this out whenever I knew I couldn't win with any B-Power yeah. adding So if cards. you're going to play this kind of theme of deck of being a hyper attack thing... Uh, that's going to be a mainstay for you because uh, whenever you play it, usually you're going to win with the kind of cards we're playing. And that's just a two cost. So you, late in the game, you have you know three, three or four cards you can play if that's one of them. With this deck, usually your other ones are boosting your attack power. 
Uh, so you normally win that fight. And then winning the fight, you still get that huge attack power to let off a big attack. Okay, and my last two cost is Fire Boost. It just adds 200 B power. And once again, another Fury effect. If you have no cards in hand, plus 600 B power instead. Um, I didn't typically use this just because it didn't seem like it would work out in the situations that it was in my hand. But I think it's definitely a viable card whenever you know that you can, in fact, get a, uh, a win on yeah, the roll. And like I said, if you notice, I mean, we've gone through over half a deck now, and, and we just ended with two cost cards. So this deck's really low cost, but really high aggro, so you're, you're adding a lot of attack. Again, that was the aim of this. So uh, a lot of those are two cost, just bumping up your attack, and then hopefully you get that Cindy's <clears throat> card that uh, you know flips the tables on who wins the fight. Uh, so now we're going to move into some three-cost cards. So first off, we have Fiery Rage, which is plus 200 B-Power. And another Fury, if you have no cards in hand, plus 8. Typically, if I found this in my hand, I would save it and try to use enough energy to have three left and still clear my hand. And if it was a team attack, it's it's crazy, especially with like a Diamond Dragonoid. Yeah, it plus would just... 8 attack is pretty crazy towards the end of the game. Uh, that's a good uh, finisher card there. Um, next up I have one Inferno Wings, which is plus 300 B power, and its effect is to remove all Bakugans, enemy Bakugan hold, and negate their effects. Uh, I found myself using this one frequently, just because on a team attack it would really dampen the blow. Um, or if you really need a roll, say they're about to get a team attack and so are you, you can get rid of all their cores, keep yours, and uh, possibly just get an easy victory. Yeah, cool card there. Really tears apart team attacks. You rip off all the cores from everybody that's standing there. Um, you know, it can, it can really help you out in that situation. So another three energy. It's just an impact laser, which adds seven attack. Once again, on the theme of just getting the craziest number of attack that you can to try to mill out their deck early on. Yeah, I would say after seeing uh, how we tested and stuff that this card needs to get up to at least two. Mm -hmm. um, being that it's a three cost, uh, we, we didn't know how this was going to work. But definitely after seeing it in action, I would definitely up this and maybe get rid of some other cards. Good card there, though. Okay, then I had two Meltdowns for three cost, the last of my three cost cards. And it does destroy an energy card going against the Ventus deck that we had in the tournament. It was... Uh, it was used as energy fodder as well. That's also a theme in this deck for me. But whenever you're going against someone that maybe has slower energy um, gaining, you can use this to get the upper hand, uh, stop them from getting more attack or B-power to save yourself a little longer. Yeah. Now we're going to move into some four-cost cards. Our, we have our one four-cost here. Uh, this one is a Molten Helix, which is plus two attack and a double hit. So typically, if you have four energy, maybe you've already evolved one of your cards. And at this point, the double attack would be extremely beneficial. Um, I saw myself getting up to the high 20s multiple times with attacks. And um, if I'm already up there with this, it would just be devastating. Yeah. Um... This is a pretty good card. Uh, it is a common, but uh, I think we do only have, have this one. one copy of it. Uh, it's a really good card, though. Uh, uh, this would definitely be up, too. Again, this deck's kind of bare bones from what we have, but it did end up working. It, 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 the deck works. It, it's not like having these uh, shorthanded is, is really killing it. Uh, so for those of us just kind of starting out, I'm sure some of you are just starting out, uh, this could be something good to try. Uh, just find a, you know, for this idea of a deck, find a bunch of things that work towards one goal, like increasing your attack power or something like that and you can usually find a way to accomplish your goal and hopefully win the game uh doing that but uh we have a couple flip cards in this deck that uh do help out a lot um so i have three block outsiders which just stops the attack of a non pyrus bakugan for three uh energy this one like the other blocks saves yeah. it's a three cost so it, it, it's a little pricey, but I think they're all kind of around that range. Uh, and it's just that, you know, classic block outsiders. It, it gets rid of everything that's not the, the color you're using or whatever. Um, 
Uh, I think we would up the flip cards a little bit, get rid of some of the other um, you know things that we, we just couldn't find a use for. Um, but again, if you're just starting out and you're gathering a bunch of uh, cards in your collection just at the beginning of the this fun little run of the beginning of this game, um, I think this would be a good kind of deck to try. You know, you don't copy the card list or whatever, obviously change some things. That's why we're kind of giving these suggestions. Uh, but this is a cool little idea to run this mono pyrus thing. Uh, it's fun. You get to use a bunch of red colored fiery guys. It's really cool. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, that is our deck list uh, for this mono pyrus deck. Um, if you enjoyed it, uh, make sure you like the video, uh, share it around, whatever you want to do. But uh, if you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then later on today, make sure that you check out the first round of our tournament. It will be this deck versus the All Ventus deck so that you can see mono versus mono. Um, and it's going to be uh, pretty exciting. Uh, all, the, all the games we had were usually pretty close, really exciting. So I think y'all are going to enjoy it. But make sure you subscribe. Uh, come back again later on today. And if you're not going to, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.